Hello everyone, I'm Dweather Dude. welcome back, and today, well, it's going to be a bit scary. We have our 30th named storm of the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season, I can't believe it. And yes, this is Tropical Storm Iota, and not only, the sad part is, not only is it the 30th named storm of the season, but it could become another major hurricane. Yes, and it's mid-November, so to find out more, stay tuned for the whole video and enjoy. If you'd like staying up to date with the latest weather forecasts and updates, then please consider hitting the subscribe button below. Let's see how fast we can get to 2,000 subscribers. Also, to help this video's performance very much, please consider clicking the like button and sharing this video with your friends. Also, please consider watching the whole video. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. So this is the 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, may, uh, this is the major update. If you want to find out, maybe if you're watching this a bit later and you, the 7 p.m. Intermediate Advisory has already come out, I'd highly recommend checking out the community post on my channel to get an update there. But as of the major update, which means we get an update on the track and everything, we are now forecasting, or the National Hurricane Center is now forecasting a major hurricane upon landfall, either in, around Honduras, right between Honduras and Nicaragua, right where recent hurricanes have gone all right and does currently have winds of 40 miles an hour and it's moving slow west at three miles an hour which means it's going to have time to develop it's sitting in a good development environment right now <clears throat> you'll be seeing maps about this all throughout this video all right so let's move on to the wind speed probabilities and they're already looking pretty high like we're already seeing 10 like 70 plus percent chance of tropical storm force winds for nicaragua and honduras so Definitely expect tropical storm conditions to say the least, but may hurricane and major hurricane conditions are definitely possible. All right, so here's your tropical storm wind field indicated by orange. Uh, of, course, of course, it's a bit small because it just developed now, but trust me, that could be getting a, that wind field might be getting a lot larger in the future. All right, here's the interactive map, so you can see exactly how strong this could get. So according to the National Hurricane Center, this will be a, already an 80 mile an hour hurricane by one o'clock a.m. Eastern on the 15th. And then, potentially a Cat 2 already, okay, by 1 p.m., a near Cat 3, like 110 with winds gusting to 130, this is 1 a.m. on the 16th at this point, all right, <clears throat> and then 120 mile an hour Cat 3, and I wouldn't be surprised, maybe a bit more than that, if it has a bit more time to strengthen, but winds gusting to 150 miles an hour at 1 p.m., probably around between 1 and 4 p.m., it would make landfall as of right now, on the 16th, which I believe is on Monday. And then moving through right through Honduras and then through El Salvador and then maybe going to the Pacific. Or it could be like the last storm we had, I believe it was Ada, right? That it just turned back out in the Caribbean. It could do that again. So we'll see. Thank goodness though, Ada has actually dissipated as of now. So key messages for Tropical Storm Iota. All right, this is expected to strengthen into a major hurricane as of right now. It could strike Central America yet again. Dangerous winds, surge, and rain. Um, this may not impact the United States, but it's certainly possible, so keep an eye on that. And <clears throat> through Wednesday morning, heavy rain from Iota, life-threatening flash flooding. This topography and the terrain and the, and the and the regions here, they can get a lot of rainfall, right? Like, even if it's only like 5 inches of rain or 10 inches, which is still a lot, but I mean, a small amount of rainfall can, can be really catastrophic to these regions. So Central America, and again, <laughs> recovery from Hurricane Ada is still underway as well. All right, and then you're going to have this storm coming in. So we're going to have to halt those. Uh, it's a shame because people have to work so hard to recover from Ada, and here comes Iota. So I would definitely, you know, maybe stop those Hurricane um, Ada, if you want to call it like recovery efforts, and start focusing on Iota because we've got to start preparing for another storm. So you could definitely see it's not the most organized. Again, it just formed into a tropical storm, right? But there's still a lot of convection brewing near the center. There's definitely a low-level center in there. All right, you can see it's swirling around, but there's no clear, really, eye that you would start to see. Obviously, it's not a hurricane yet, but it, 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 you want to start to see some kind of rotation away from the convection or surrounding it, and we're not quite seeing that yet. So, But it will, trust me, because we it's the storm is just starting to develop now. So again, winds of 40 miles an hour, pressure down to 1,006 millibars. I think it was down from like 1010 not too long ago. And here is the current storm location, so basically just south of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Right, like here is here's Jamaica right here. Cayman Islands like right up there somewhere. So it's right in between uh, basically Haiti, Dominican Republic, and Jamaica, point south. All right, so it's also not too far from northern South America. You could be getting some 
waves and rip currents over there right now because of the low pressure and it's close proximity to you. Now, it does say Tropical Storm 31. Actually, when this was this was named Tropical Depression 31, we've had 31 Tropical Depressions, but this is our 30th named storm because we had one Tropical Depression earlier in the season that did not form into a storm. But yes, this is our 30th named storm, believe it or not. Like, we're smashing 2005's record of 28. So, all right, and here we have the model tracks. And now it's good news that the models are agreeing right now. That is definitely good news, but it's not good news for the location that they're agreeing on. Right, like Honduras, they're all projecting a, a landfall rain between Nicaragua and Honduras. They're moving right through Honduras. So, and that's good that they're agreeing, but it's not good for Honduras because, oh my goodness, all the models are, you know, take like tracking the storm towards us. So, let's take a look at the GEFS model tracks again. There's your like almost rapid intensification, and I'll talk about that why just in just a bit. Pressure anywhere from 990 down 980. I see a few models take it to 965. So they have the pressure getting pretty low through the hurricane stages, maybe even a major hurricane, all right? And the GEPS model tracks do the same thing, except they bring it farther north and take a landfall closer to Mexico. Maybe like Belize could get impacted by this. All right, so that's definitely very interesting. All right, and here's the intensity guidance. You can just pretty much see this is gonna shoot straight up. Pretty much all models have this either at a Cat 2 or a Cat 3 at some point. Um, a few do, do max out at Cat 1, but quite a few, i say majority, take it to either Cat 2 or Cat 3, and one takes it to a Cat 4. Not sure on that one yet, but given the environment it's in, I, it's possible. And yes, it's November. We don't see major hurricanes too often in November, but as I always say, it can definitely happen, especially with the kind of year 2020 has been in terms of tropical activity. So the tropical intensity index, this is where the storm is right now, basically right around here. All right, it is staying in a highly favorable environment for development right now. And it will be staying that way all the way through landfall as it looks right now. All right, and why that is, you'll see through the next few maps. So first thing is dry air. There's a lot of dry air from where Ada was. Ada was battling dry air all the way. It became a hurricane for two very brief periods, two separate periods. You got Theta over here battling some dry air as well. But look at Iota. I never thought I'd be saying the I name in the Greek alphabet. That's just so crazy. All right, so here's Iota, and there's really no dry air. I mean, sure, there's some to the, like north of the Caribbean islands, but nothing that's going to bother Iota right now because all the dry air is like distracted. It's all the way up here. And to be honest with you, the tropical Atlantic doesn't have that much dry air compared to normal either, actually. So you got Iota not battling too much dry air. That's the first thing, all right? Second thing, tropical cyclone heat potential is always going to be high in the Caribbean, and it still is. Again, here's where the low is right now. Got some pretty high. Um, I would definitely say it would have a bit more tropical uh, heat energy if it was just a bit farther north. But then again, if it tracks north, then you're going to start to run in the dry air. So I definitely think it's in a good position right now. We still got some moderate slash high um, heat potential like in the um, surface and subsurface of the Caribbean. All right, and then we have the wind shear. Now, this is the biggest thing. This is what really scares me a lot. There is some shear to the east of the storm, but it's not really reaching it. But look at this. Look at where the shear is. You can see the L is where the storm is now. And just to the left of it is where it's going to be tracking. I, I've highlighted in black for you. Actually, I might uh, I might want to do it. Maybe you guys can see it better in neon. There we go. So I've highlighted neon. This is where it's going to be tracking. Look at these dark blues, guys. The shear would be between 0 and 10 knots, which is nothing. That is scary low amounts of shear. So that means that this storm could get together very quickly, considering as of right now, there is really no dry air, little to no shear. We got some decent um, tropical cyclone heat energy. And then here's the sea surface temperature anomalies, right? They are also above average. All right, so this is looking a bit scary here, considering that this thing really has no limits right now, little to, li little to no limits. Um, sea surface temperatures are between 29 and 30 Celsius, which is like pushing the upper 80s. Uh, a little bit similar to what Ada kind of had, but a bit less. Ada had a, a bit lower water temperatures. All right, so now this is the part where we get into the models. All right, so let's get into the weather models here, starting with the HWRF model. Let me actually zoom out a little bit. There we go. That's better. All right, so I love this model because it's a good intensity model, and you can just see. This is the precip. We'll show you the winds uh, as well, but we're going to take a look at the precip first. Look at that rain, the core right around that eye wall. And you got massive just bands of heavy rain. It's such a high detail model. That's why I like it so much. Oh, we're also going to be showing the GFS and the European as well. So there's the storm moving west. All right. And it, 
and good job with with chocolate tidbits for tracking this because you can see it actually sometimes it has an issue where it doesn't follow the storm all the way but it does look like it's doing that so that's good but look at this moving to the north and in case you don't know where this is they actually call to, for moving north staying over water for even longer and making landfall right on belize it's probably a major hurricane we're going to be checking the wind strength right now or that they're projecting the hwf model but look at this a landfall a catastrophic landfall right on belize city all right we're gonna take a look at the winds now with the hwrf model all right so here it is right now 45 knots of wind is actually what they were projecting for 8 p.m so maybe in the intermediate advisory they might strengthen it i don't know if the hwrf model is correct of course all right but look at this so here is here's a storm and they already have a hurricane developing boom this is 2 a.m on the 15th it is already a hurricane in comparison the and that's pretty much exactly what the National Hurricane Center is saying. 1 a.m. Sunday, it is going to be a hurricane. So I got to give it credit that the HWRF and the National Hurricane Center right now appear to be right on line. All right, but look at this. All right, so keep in mind, 100 knots is a Category 3 hurricane, and boom, we just surpassed that. At this point, this looks like 120 mile an hour Cat 3. And keep in mind, Nicaragua and Honduras are way down there. Like, this is like the that, – that's Mexico at this point. This is Belize City. This is the Yucatan Peninsula. All right, look at this. Now we're pushing 111 knots at this point, which is most likely a cat four. And that's what their HWRF is projecting. And that scares me. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that scares me considering there's such a good intensity model. And then there's a landfall with 113 knots of wind right on the Yucatan Peninsula. All right, so here is the Cyclone of Vorticity signature now. All right, let's get this right here. And here is a storm. You can see it does look a bit ragged right now. It just formed a new tropical storm, so keep that in mind. But look at this. Look how the core, <clears throat> the like the immediate, like the center eye wall, all right, and the, the center of the storm just starts growing in size. You'll see it as it develops into a hurricane, then major hurricane. The size went from like this, like at, at, at first. Now it's more like this. So the storm will definitely be growing in size. The wind field will be growing in size as well with the bands that will be coming through. All right. This is looking very scary. I'm not trying to scare you guys. It is November. Hurricane season lasts for another two plus weeks. And it could even, like I said, judging by 2020, the way it's been, it may go beyond that. Or this could be our last storm. It could end with a bang. We never know. All right. But definitely got to keep our eye out. I mean, this season has been so extraordinary. Definitely 100%, 110%. This is our record breaking season without a doubt. All right. At least in terms of name storms anyway, compared to 2005. So here's the GFS model. Now, not quite as high depth, but still a great model. Now, they have it. Most models have like a borderline Nicaragua Honduras landfall. GFS takes it kind of like an arc like this and has it making landfall on an angle right on Honduras. Um, looks like a hurricane is what they're calling for in terms of strength, like a Cat 1. And then they just drop it in the Pacific and it's gone. So definitely GFS has a shorter lifespan. Staying over water for a shorter period of time. And let's take a look at the winds. Now, I do like this because it's full resolution wind, so that definitely does help. Now, they have it become, now remember HWF and the National Hurricane Center had it becoming a hurricane at 2 a.m., 1 to 2 a.m. on Sunday. GFS says 8 p.m. on Sunday. So it's a bit different, all right, but still, pretty much very similar times. Um, <clears throat> and then a land, uh, landfall with about close to 90 knots of wind which is about a mid-level Cat 2 or so. So it's still a very strong system, all right, especially considering the fact that it's November and we were hopefully supposed to see chocolate activity kind of start to decrease a little bit. Slightly more drier, slightly more sheer, lower um, sea surface temperatures, but that's not seem to be the case, especially in a body of water like the Caribbean where anything can happen, right? We can see some in December down here. You remember 2016, way out in the subtropical Atlantic, we had a Hurricane Alex develop. All right, so, and that was in the north, in the cold waters of the North Atlantic. All right, I do think it was a subtropical storm before that, but I don't think so. So take a look at the European model. At first, you might think like, okay, this is the morning of the 15th. It doesn't look too bad on a cyclonic loop. Sure, all right, but let's advance one more day to Monday morning and boom. <laughs> yeah, it looks a lot different, doesn't it? All right, you, it's hard to tell because it's a bit small still, but a very strong hurricane. Then it grows even more. At landfall, and then the, and then the whatever is left of it will drift off into the Pacific, and it'll be gone. All right, so let's take a look. Actually, before we close out, let's take a look at what the European model thinks in terms of wind strength. All right, so let's go back here, and they're projecting somewhere close to a pretty much a Cat One hurricane. 
So kind of like review here. Uh, HWF said cat four, GFS said cat two, European is taking cat one in terms of strength. Um, European and GFS call for a Nicaragua slash Honduras borderline landfall, while the HWRF called for a Yucatan Peninsula landfall. That was just a brief recap in case you didn't catch on. So that is it for today's video, guys. Ring the bell to stay tuned for updates. Iron to Weather Dude signing off till next time. And to find out the 7 p.m. intermediate update, again, consider jumping onto the community post on my channel so you can see that as well. I am Dweather Dude signing off till next time. Stay awesome, and I will catch you guys in the next video.